we all, whether you're a consultant or working house, have a shared responsibility to deepen relationships, whether it's with a brand or with other colleagues or with a company. And so we are in the people business. Is that fair? Is that fair? Good. Uh, let's also remember that people or humans only care about two things. At the end of the day, it's just two things. And I did not make this up. Steal it. Number one, humans care about looking good or not looking stupid. Same thing as far as I'm concerned. Let's never forget that people just need to feel and look good and not stupid. The second thing, which is very relevant to what we're about to talk about for the rest of the next few hours, is humans need to be loved. Any relationship, whether you use the word love or not, is rooted in a deeper connection, and in other words, love in many cases, particularly outside of work. At work, sure, we use the word love sometimes, but really what we mean, like any good relationship or any good situation where there is love, people need to be heard. You know, people need to have a voice. So that hopefully helps set the stage for, about, for what we're talking about. Different than selling products, technology, services, what have you, creating experiences and environments where people can truly feel heard, feel like they have a voice, if you can do that, lots of great things can happen. So, shared definitions. I'd offer this one. Please, let's consider this a two-way conversation. I'm not gonna stand here and preach two-way and not have people speak up. So sure, we'll have chances for Q&A at the panel later, but interrupt me, raise your hand, debate if you choose, I would love to. I'd like to offer that experiences, let's start right here in the middle, an experience is, I'm gonna just simplify this by design. An experience is a collection of touch points. People, everybody agree? Okay. Touch points that are influenced by more effective communications. Offline, online, you know, face to face, big group, small group. Whatever kind of touch point it is, you have a chance to connect with somebody in any way that influences better experiences. The context for this morning is at work. So employee experiences powered by more effective communications. Well, if you're having a better experience, call it transactional or emotional, whatever it is, then you're gonna have higher levels of brand engagement. There's more openness. There's more dialogue. There's more context. Hopefully you're asking more questions than you're answering. Well, if you have higher brand engagement, then you're creating a context to, you know, it's easy to say build brand ambassadors, but you can't build anything if people aren't having an opportunity to be involved. So I prefer the word nurture, if you will. It takes repetitive, very conscious activity and touch points to nurture anything, whether you're growing a plant, giving it food, giving it water, or whether you're trying to deepen a relationship between people and their brand and their company. That sound good? So we often talk about employee engagement and what does that mean and then what's the difference between brand engagement? Clearly there's some big differences. Uh, now that you agree, at least I saw a lot of nods, let's move through. This is what we've structured as, we talk about the what and the how of our work. The what is, well, what is an experience at work? So the, again, the soapbox I like to stand on is the problem with work and what leads to de deeper levels of disengagement, whether it's your connectivity to your people or the company or the brand, is bad experience. And the other problem is that we've designed, and I'm looking at all of us, uh, and we've kind of gone along with creating experience of people at work that are very function-centric. Everyone's fighting for the shame mindshare. You're trying to send brand communications to employees about why you should care, and then you've got HR sending their stuff, and you've got leadership sending their stuff, and everyone's fighting for the same audience. Well, we need to be more conscious of that. So steal this simple design, but five dimensions, 20 elements. They're, they look all equal, because it looks pretty, but we all know that every organization needs to look through a lens to determine, well, where they should focus. How do we focus in creating a better experience for our people? Some organizations might 
really have a good set of values. I saw the posters out here. When you walk to the bathroom, you see Citrix has some really, really great values. Unity is, is a great one. I haven't seen that often, actually. Well, they, they may be good here. I'm not going to walk through this whole thing. We don't have time. But if you don't have trust, accountability, and empathy in any organization, whatever your words are on values, then you can't even talk about values. You've got to focus on those first. So bottom line is for today, this is, whoops, this is what I wanted to really um, call out. We really need to spend more time, not just as brand people, not just as leadership, not just as internal communications folks, but really create a conversation about what does that brand mean to our marketplace? What's that promise that we're making? What promise are we making to our people? How can everybody on an individual level create a connection between themselves and what we're selling or providing? It's a really important question. And we're finding you know, quick stats like when, uh, when you look at the workforce of the future, when you're creating opportunities for people on an individual level to identify their individual purpose and create meaning at work, that's more valuable than how much money they take home at the end of the month. We really need to listen to that and reprioritize is, I think, another way of, of thinking about it, or at least think a bit differently about how you're investing in all of these experiences that you're creating and how conscious you are about where brand fits in. I'm going to move on because I have some stories to tell. Building blocks, fundamental truths. If there's no purpose or meaning, good luck. Sorry. Uh, I don't mean to be so blunt, but our job, you know, perfect example is a heavy technology organizations. I'm going to call out Salesforce. We're going to dive into this deep in a minute. They have the luxury of possibility. You know, there, there's stories that can be built that are authentic in an organization like that. I'm going to share some other stories with some very strong brands in a second, but I want to be really, really clear. I understand completely that not every organization has the, um, the asset, if you will, or the opportunity to work with such strong brands that in some cases people have never even heard of. Uh, our job is to define purpose on an individual level, on a company level, on a go-to-market level, if you will, and make, it ha make sure it's purpose and has meaning. Second, we talk a lot about creating a consumer-like experience for people at work. It's, it's obviously not talk. We have to create more of a consumer-like experience because that's the expectation of the workforce. If they need to just get plugged in and do something a certain way, they're going to leave. You're going to lose money. Everyone's going to lose. But if you can understand what matters to them and personalize as much as possible that experience, happy to share some examples, it's more relevant. It gets them out of bed in the morning. And then lastly, Dialogue. I mean, some of the stuff I understand is fundamental, but part of why we're here, I hope, is to continually remind ourselves of some of these fundamentals. You don't create a brand advocacy strategy with really great messaging and then say to your team and or your leadership, here you go. This is the best messaging. This, oh my gosh, the message map is dialed in. Great dialogue starts with the right questions. Here's a bunch more ideas. Uh, we, based on HL, a dimension of the framework, there's specific suggestions and ideas um, that you can feel free to challenge or adopt or steal. Uh, like I said, I'll be happy to, to share these with you guys, so by no means you take notes. But with that, uh, yeah, we do a lot of great work with great companies. And uh, I always like to end it on this, because we can talk strategy all day long. Uh, in my career, I've made good money selling strategy work that's worth nothing if you don't invest in making sure you can see that all the way through to implementation from creating little, little things to the biggest things and the biggest experiences. So um, thank you for inviting me. And uh, feel free to reach out and continue the conversation anytime.